Good morning. This is Dr. Charles Schottke. I am the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Medical Officer of the Retina Foundation of the Southwest in Dallas, Texas. Today we are continuing our series of videos on how we do research at the Retina Foundation. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Timothy Cashpole, who is going to be discussing how we do our research in developing a novel drug delivery device for the treatment of age-related macular degeneration. I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Catchpole, and I work in the research lab of Dr. Carl Chalky. In our lab, we're focused on the problem of age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. Right now, AMD is the leading cause of blindness in people aged over 50 in the Western world. And there are two forms of AMD, the dry form and the more destructive but more rare wet form of AMD. Right now, there's only one approved treatment for AMD, and it can only treat the wet form of AMD. Unfortunately, that treatment involves getting injections directly into your eye. In our lab, we're focused on testing new potential drugs for the treatment of AMD and also new ways of delivering those drugs to the patients. Today, I'd like to show you how we try and tackle the problem of AMD in our lab. We have two talented chemists working in the lab right now, Dr. Chandima Bulamula and Ruvanthi Koloratni. They were able to look at potential drugs for AMD treatment and they modified the structures of those drugs to hopefully make them more effective at treating AMD. This work was very complicated, but they were able to synthesize multiple forms of these drugs. Our role in the lab is now to test these drugs, and for that, we start with testing the drugs on cells. This is the cell culture facility in the foundation, and here, we're able to grow retinal cells in plastic dishes for the first step in testing the drugs. The cells are grown in incubators that control the temperature and oxygen levels, and are fed with media to keep them alive and growing. The cells you see here are retinal pigmented epithelial cells, or RPEs. These are one of the first cell types to get damaged in AMD. And here we can check if the drugs we developed can protect these cells from getting damaged. We have some elegant ways of checking the health of these cells, and I'd like to show you one of those methods now. This is the confocal laser scanning microscope, and it allows us to look at the cells in incredibly high detail. Not only can we look at individual cells, but we can look at subcellular structures within the cells. For example, this image here shows the mitochondria within the cells, a structure responsible for producing energy for the cell and one that is strongly linked to AMD. Using a technique called fluorescent antibody staining, we are also able to look at the expression of individual proteins within the cells. I'd like to give you an example of how we can use this to test our drugs. This image here shows RPE cells stained for a protein called ZO1, seen here in the red color. This protein marks the contacts between the RPE cells. If we simulate the effect of smoking with these cells, you can see that the ZO1 protein, or red color, is completely disrupted, indicating that the cells are getting sick. Now, if we treat the cells with our new drugs and then simulate smoking, you can see that the ZO1 protein remains intact showing us that these drugs have protected the cells against the damaging effects of smoking. We have other high-tech methods of analyzing the drugs in our lab. This is the HPLC machine, which Allison Takich uses to analyze the drugs in cells and tissues. This machine allows Allison to determine how much drug is entering the cells, and even if the drugs are breaking down once they get into the cells. Now I've shown you some of the techniques we use in the lab to test these drugs, the next problem to tackle is, how can we use these drugs in a clinical setting? For that, I'd like to show you some of the implants we're working on. As I mentioned, the current treatment for AMD involves injections into the eye. We'd like to find an alternative, and we've been working on several implants to address this. You can see here an implant that Amy Thompson has manufactured in our lab. These implants are constructed from polymers, and drugs are loaded into the implants. The implant would sit on the surface of the eye, where a patient with AMD would barely notice it, and slowly release the drugs which would move through the surface of the eye into the back of the retina. We're currently testing several types of implants of different polymers and manufacturing techniques, and we're hopeful of the results. 
Well, I hope I've given you a good introduction to the ways that we're tackling the issue of AMD here in Dr. Chalky's lab. If you have any questions, please email the development team at development at retinafoundation.org. I hope you're staying safe in these challenging times, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Take care. Thank you.